Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Wednesday catch up video. Today's video, I do a little bit with Deborah. Um, I bought her like a metal sculpture in a steam rally at Scampston. It's like, like a flea market, like a car boot sale, a trader's stall. It was a really badly rusted um, sculpture thing, sort of like forged and welded together. Um, very nicely made. If anybody knew us who made it, I've seen one like it, it'd be interesting to find out. Anyway, I bought her this for a tenner, and I also bought her a packet of wire brushes, which kept her occupied for a good couple of hours, sitting wire brushing it, cleaning it. Uh, we'll bring it home, and she'll put some wax on it. After that, I'm going to show another sort of milling related video, uh, all about tramming the mill. I think this one is about 12 or 13 year old, so I look a hell of a lot younger and thinner in the work <laughs> workshops a lot, less cluttered. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Today's video. bought this candle holder for Deb at Scampton Steam Rally or for one of the trailers that was really heavily rusted and Deb spent a lot of time wire brushing it and cleaning it up. Now she's going to put some wax onto it. I don't know what it is, it's like an apprentice piece. It's all being hand forged and welded together with a little rat or a mouse, looks like a rat on the bottom. It's really decorative. Um, I spent £10 on it and I think it's well worth spending £10 on it to save it. If anybody recognises it, there's no names or no numbers on, uh, but it certainly had a lot of a lot of time spent on it. Before I set the table up, I'm just going to clean it just to make sure there's no little burrs or little ding marks on it. I've got a screw on here, and all I use it for is this particular job. And all it'll do is take off any little raised parts where it's been bumped. I used one or two marks on the table. They were here when I, there when I bought it. But basically it's not bad because it is quite an old machine. What they call witness marks. Clumsy bastard marks as far as I'm concerned, you know what I mean? Right, so it's taken off any small imperfections. I've got a precision ground disc that I use for clocking the table in, and that is a precision ground disc. It's a core brake disc. Which is machined with very accurate tolerance. So I can put a clock gauge in here, I can spin it all the way around there and note the reading and adjust it accordingly. It doesn't really need clamping now, but it won't do any harm, it's one less thing that's going to move. Right, 
right, just a little gentle nip. That's all I use, more than the collet, as close to the spindle as you can get it, just on the dead gauge on the end. This is the setup that I use for trimming the mill. I simply set the dead gauge to zero and I can pivot it around to that side, see what the reading says. That's the easy one to do because the head tilts that way and it tilts that way. The other one to do is that way and that way, which is called the nod. You can't adjust that on this milling machine. Well, you can adjust it. Uh, the way to adjust it is to put shims either under here or under there. So what I'll do, I'll bring the camera a bit closer, I'll set the mirror up there, and we'll get this one done first, and then we'll see how far out it is on the other way. Zero the clock gauge. Right, we'll turn the spindle 180 degrees. Which is there. I'll zoom in so you can see the, the gauge in the mirror. Hopefully. Right, and that's on zero as well. That means we don't need to adjust that axis, it's absolutely perfect. Right, hopefully you can see the dial gauge in the back there. There's the there's the pointer. Bring it around to zero. Right, at zero there. Round to the front. We've got a discrepancy. That's eight thousandths of an inch, which is quite a lot actually. Zero there. Eight thou there. So between there and there, there's an eighth hour difference. What needs to happen is the head needs to tilt that way down at this side, which will mean loosen off these bolts and put a little piece of shim underneath there. That was <laughs> yes, bad luck we'll avoid it. Right, we'll move that before we do break it. That is nuts on the bottom as well, but they allow the head to swivel there and there in slots. There's one more in behind there. Luckily, I, luckily I've got a supply of 17 mil spanners because I've absolutely gone there with that bastard. Right, so the head needs to tilt like that. I've got some brass shim here. I hope Deb doesn't see this. <laughs> Shouldn't be happy seeing that scissors used for cutting this stuff. I think this brass shim is 3,000 stick. Have a look. 3,000. So we'll put a little piece of that in behind there. Right, that simply slots into there like that. We'll lift them up and try it again.
Right, we'll try it again. Hopefully you can see the, the point there. Here it comes up to zero. I'll put the zero on the side there so you can see it. The zero is at three o'clock. Right, so zero there. I'll bring it down to the front. Zero. Well that's amazing it's worked that it's worked out well. Absolutely cock on that. So it's zero there. It's zero there. Zero there. And zero there. That's absolutely just a job. I wonder if I can mount the camera on there and spin it around with the camera on, that'll be, that'll be a good shot, I'm going to try. This Nurga DTI stand is the best camera stand I've ever used. Virtually all of my machining shots are done using that. Basically, spot on all the way around. Certainly for the sort of machine I'm doing, that's well within anything I'm going to need. Once again, it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. There's always a massive thanks for all the letters, emails, handwritten letters. Um, phone calls and summons I've had from various viewers um, basically regarding mental health since I brought the subject up um, I'm sure I have helped a few people to kind of get help anyway that's enough talking thanks for watching